What's up guys and welcome to another Blender tutorial. Today I'm going to be showing you how to recreate this mind-bending tunnel animation loop in Blender. I'll be showing you lots of really interesting displacement techniques which you can then use to apply in your future work. Plus you end up with this really cool render which you can then show off to your friends so that's a bonus there. But before I get into it I just want to give a huge shout out to my followers who helped make this happen. I was actually getting a lot of DMs on my Insta requesting a tutorial on this one so I'm really excited to share it with you all. And if you haven't done so already, make sure you follow me on there as it's where I'm most active and it's where I post the majority of my artwork. I'm always open to story requests, so I encourage you to have a browse on there. And if you see anything that makes you Blender curious, just leave a comment or drop me a DM. I've actually made a couple of variations of this render too, which everyone seemed to love. I've actually recorded some bonus tutorials exclusive to my patrons, so if you would like to support me directly and gain some access to some exclusive content, consider supporting me through Patreon. Right, with that out of the way, let's jump straight into it. Right, so once you've got Blender open, we're actually going to leave the scene as it is. We're not going to delete everything, we're going to keep this cube, and we're going to scale it up on the y-axis by 8 meters. So hit S, Y, and 8. And that's going to give us a long cube for us to work with, and this is going to be our tunnel. So I want you to go into edit modes, so hit tab. And the first thing we're going to do is just delete these faces. So come to face select here, click on this face, hit X, delete faces, pivot round, click on the other, hit X, delete faces. Now stay in edit mode because the next thing we're going to do is move this object along the Y axis. But the reason why we stay in edit mode is because I want to keep this origin point dead in the center of the world. So I want you to hit A and that selects all of the faces of the current object we're editing. And we're going to hit G, Y, minus 8. And as you can see, that's shifted the whole object down the Y axis, so the end of the tunnel perfectly aligns in the center of the world while retaining this origin point here. Now this step is crucial if you want it to loop perfectly using the displacement settings I'm about to show you later. So come out of edit mode. Next step, we're going to apply all these transform adjustments that we've made to the subject. So I want you to hit control A and select all transforms. Now what that does, if you've got a keen eye, you'll notice that all of these values have reset to default while retaining the mesh data of this object. This again is a really important step if you want your render to look like mine because once you start shading and displacing the object the way the transform settings are set up is really going to affect the way they function. Next step I'm going to select my camera I'm going to hit Alt G and then Alt R. That resets the location and the rotation. Now I'm going to hit RX90 and that rotates the camera so it faces along the y-axis. Now with my camera selected I'm going to hit G Y minus 16. This is to ensure that my camera origin point falls exactly at the start of the tunnel. So hit zero, that's going to take you into camera mode and you can kind of see where we're going with this. This is our tunnel and the aim is to pass the camera along the y-axis and we want the tunnel to seem infinite. Normally what you could do is just duplicate the tunnel along the y-axis by hitting shift D, Y16 and keep on repeating that and that will basically create your infinite loop. However, in this case we're not going to do that because we're going to be using displacement on the object and the thing with displacement is although it's really cool for getting some really interesting shapes really quickly, the issue with it is that it's quite random so it can, you can run into some issues when you're trying to loop animations because of the random nature of the displacement you won't actually be able to connect the objects properly because you'll notice that they're not really joining where they should. The way I like to treat this is to just add a mirror modifier and that ensures that the objects perfectly connect um, when you duplicate them along. So we're going to go to our modifier section here, this little spanner. We're going to add a modifier and we'll add the mirror modifier. And we want to set the axis to the Y axis and just remove the X because we don't need that. And this is why I did that step earlier in edit mode, moving the object down the Y axis, keeping the origin point here, because this is the way the mirror modifier works. Um, the point of mirror is basically the origin point. So for example, if I went into edit mode, hit GY, and if I move that away, you can see that orange dot is literally where the mirror works. So yeah, that's why I did that earlier. So now that we have our object mirrored, that's going to prevent any issues with displacement down the line, so we don't have to worry about any of that. So the next step is to create that infinite tunnel that we were talking about. So, so again, normally the logical step would just be to duplicate the object along the y-axis. I actually like to create an instance instead, and I'll explain why in a bit, but for now let's just set it up. So click on your cube, 
hit M on your keyboards, create a new collection, and we're gonna call this tunnel. Hit OK. We're gonna hit Shift A, collection instance, and add tunnel. And we're gonna hit GY32 so that the two objects perfectly connect. And the reason why we're moving it 32 steps along the Y axis is because the mirror modifier essentially doubled the object in length. So this here is our instance of this object. We're going to duplicate that, so hit Shift D, Y32, and now just hit Shift R, which repeats the step, and we're just going to hit Shift R about eight times. So you get a nice long tunnel. So why did I make this an instance instead of duplicating it? The first reason is because it actually eases up stress on your computer's resources, because these act more as sort of ghost copies of the object, rather than actual mesh data. And the reason for that is because there aren't actually vertices in these objects, they're just sort of, um, like I said, they're just sort of ghost copies of it. And the second reason why I like to make instances is because any edits that you make to this master object will actually affect all of the instances that you have. For example, if I pull this face up, it's gonna affect all of the duplications. It just ends up creating more time for you. So yeah, that's why I do that, and I encourage you guys to do it too. Great, so we've got our tunnel sorted. We're just gonna go into render mode and start to shade the object and sort of light up the scene. But first, I want you to save your work. So we're gonna hit Z and then A. So now that we're in render mode, first thing I like to do is come to the world settings and just make this world black. Select this light here, and we're gonna hit Alt G to reset the location. That's gonna put our light dead in the center of the scene. And actually first, I just wanna get all of these instances out of the way because it's a bit messy here. So click on this tunnel here, hold shift up to the last one, hit M on your keyboards, new collection, and we'll call that instances. This is where all your copies of your tunnel are gonna be collapsed at. So click on your cube. This is your master object. So like I said, any edits that you make to this object is gonna affect the whole tunnel. Let's put this light into the tunnel instance and what that's going to do is it's going to populate the whole tunnel with lighting and again that's what I love about instancing once you have all your instances placed in the scene you can just drag other objects into that group and it will populate where they all are so the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to click on my cube bring my mouse over here and it's going to turn into a little crosshair now now I want to just drag that in and it's going to open a new window for us I want you to click on this bit here, this is the editor type, and we're going to change this to shader editor. And this is where we're going to be doing the material editing for our tunnel. So hit N, get rid of that menu. We're going to be using the principal BSDF shader, and here's what we're going to do. We're going to pump the metallic up all the way, and we're going to take the base color, and we're just going to bring that, just make it a little bit more gray. Now I want you to hit Shift A, and we're going to add a texture, and we're going to add a noise texture, and we're just going to pop that here, and we're going to plug the fact into the roughness. In order to have a bit more control over the way it handles, we're gonna hit Shift A and we're gonna add a color ramp and we're just gonna pop that in between. We're gonna leave the black where it is and I'm just gonna bring the white in to about here. And I'm gonna pump the scale up to about 11. I'm gonna bring the roughness all the way up and I'm gonna pump the detail up to about 5.4 and you can kind of see the pattern we're getting. Kind of gives it this gritty look. But when we start adding some more color to the scene, it's gonna look really cool. Now I want to make the scene look a bit better, so I'm going to go to my scene settings here and we're going to be using Eevee. I'm going to add ambient occlusion, I'm going to add some blue, we're going to add screen space reflections, this will make everything pop. And next we're going to add motion blur for when we start animating the camera. I'm going to go to my light here and I'm just going to change the power to 500. I'm going to set the radius to about 0.54 and let's change the colour to a more purple. Now let's go back into the solid viewport just because our computer, your computer may be struggling a bit and I want to start animating. Hit Z and 6, that will take you back into this view mode. And we're just going to animate the camera movement. We're going to be rendering this out at 24 frames per second and I want it to be a 10 second loop. So we're going to set the end frame to 240 and let's just animate our camera for now. So we're going to click on our camera. Let's do that infinite tunnel camera animation. So with your camera selected, Come to the transform settings here. We're gonna go on the Y axis, we're gonna add a keyframe on the first frame. Come to this little dot here, add a keyframe. We're gonna hit shift right, and then hit right again, so you go to 241. We're gonna change this to 16, 
and we're going to apply a keyframe. Now the reason why we set it to 241 is because if you set it to 240, you actually end up rendering out a duplicate frame. It will basically make it look like your loop is glitching when you try render it out. So make sure that you give yourself an extra frame to work with. So with that set, we're going to cover our mouse over the timeline. We're going to hit A, T, set the interpolation to linear. And what that does is it ensures that there's no acceleration or deceleration when the camera comes towards these keyframes. This is really crucial if you want your loop to look good. So with that camera animated, I'm gonna go back into rendered mode, so hit Z and A again. I want to add another light into the scene. So we got this purple light here, which stays in the middle and you can see lights up all of the tunnels ahead. I'm gonna add another light. So I'm gonna hit Shift A, add a light. I'm gonna add a point light. And I'm gonna set this to about a thousand watts, make it nice and strong but we're gonna actually give this one a nice sort of aqua blue. So put that around there, and we're gonna actually move this light way deep into the tunnel. We'll say about 14 meters into the tunnel on the Y axis. So go to the transform settings, put that enter 14 on the Y, and you can see that's over there now. Now I'm just gonna drop the radius a bit, so we'll say about 0.18. I want this light to sort of move with the camera. So the way we do that, is we're gonna click on this point light. I want you to hold control, then click on the camera so that you've selected both of them. Now I want you to hit control P and I want you to select object keep transform. And what that does is it parents the light to the camera so that when you hit play, this blue light is gonna move with the camera. Next step, I'm gonna to go to my camera. I'm just gonna bring the focal length down to about 32. So with all that done, there's one more thing I wanna do just to make everything pop a bit more. And that's come to my scene settings again here and just scroll down and go to color management. I want you to set the look to very high contrast and I want you to set the gamma to 0.8. So that's pretty much all the shading and lighting done for this scene. We're not really gonna be touching that anymore. That's pretty much done. Now in my render, you'll notice this really interesting effect going on. We've got this really cool sort of morphing effect which I created using a mix of object displacement and camera focal length animation, which I'm gonna show you right now. But before I do that, I just wanna show you some variations of this render that I made using the same scene. I really like these renders. I think they look really cool. And I just wanted to let you know that I'll actually be sharing some exclusive bonus content on my Patreon, showing you exactly how I made these variations. So if you do find value in the content that I put out, I encourage you guys to check out my Patreon and consider supporting me where you'll find more exclusive bonus content like this. Right, so back to the tutorial. So we're gonna go back into solid mode. So Z and then six again. Now the first thing I want you to do is just to click on your master cube, this one here in your tunnel collection. Now I want you to hit tab and go into edit mode and we're gonna hit A. I want you to come to edge and subdivide it. And we're gonna subdivide it by 100 and as you can see this has given us loads of fidelity for the displacement modifier to work with so come out of edit mode that's done now I'm just gonna get rid of this menu we don't need this now with your cube selected go to the modifier section here this little spanner we're gonna add a modifier and we're gonna add a displace modifier this one here now it's important that you move this one to the top so that the mirror modifier is working after the displacement. Now obviously this looks a bit crap, so what we're gonna do, we're gonna add a new texture here and it's gonna change it again. Still looks like crap, so we're gonna go to the texture properties here. This is actually where you start to change the shape of your displacement. So come over here and we're gonna change the type to clouds. I just wanna give you a basic rundown of what the displace modifier does. So in a nutshell, what the displacement modifier does is it reads the black and white data of this texture image and it applies it to the mesh of your object. So for example, we're gonna change this noise basis to cell noise and you can kind of see where I'm going with this. You see this is more blocky. And now once we adjust the size, we're gonna pump that up to two. As you pump the size up of this texture, the size of the displacement sort of changes with it. So we've got that pump to two, we're gonna set the depth to one and that gives us this nice little blocky shape. And as you can see, all the, all the sides join perfectly because of our mirror modifier. So we have our tunnel now with the really cool displacement effect. So the first thing we're gonna do is go to the start of the timeline here on frame one. 
let's go to our modifier properties and on the displace we're going to set this to zero so there's no displacement we're going to apply a keyframe at zero click on this keyframe here hit shift d bring it to two for one so that so that at the end of the animation the strength also stays at zero and we're going to go to the middle frame which will be one two one in this case and we're going to pump the strength up to 1.5 and we're going to add a keyframe here now just hit a t and make sure your interpolation is set to bezier in this case because we want animation to smooth out and you're going to see what this does it essentially brings the displacement in and out so it appears like the tunnel is sort of breathing i think it's a really cool effect so the next step we're going to animate the camera focal length to create a sort of warping effect as the camera passes through the tunnel so here's what we're going to do we're going to go to the camera here, click on your camera, go to the camera settings here, this little green camera on the right menu, apply a keyframe at 32 on the first frame, come to frame 241, apply a keyframe, and I want you to go to frame 121 again, and we're going to bring the focal length right out, so it's a really long look, and we're going to set that, let's say 222, and you just need to apply a keyframe here. Now we're going to go to this thing here, this editor type, go to dope sheet and change this to action editor and go back to your timeline. I don't know why you have to do that to get this summary up, but for some reason you have to do that. So yeah, just follow those steps so that you can get this menu when you get to your timeline. And on your camera, go to focal length and just highlight these bottom keyframes, all of these focal length ones, and hit T and change that to bezier. You want your focal length keyframes to be smoothed out with the bezier. However, you want your camera object transform to stay linear to keep it passing through the tunnel. And that's pretty much all there is to it. So we're going to just watch that. And there we have it. That's pretty much all there is to it. It's actually not too complicated, really. It looks more complex than it is. So the only thing left to do now is to just render out the animation. So here's what we're going to do. We're going to go to the output properties here. Um, first of all, I want you to save your work. So hit Control S, just save your work. Um, always a good idea to save before rendering, just in case the project crashes. Now come to your output here, and this is where the render's going to come out. So make sure you set that somewhere you can find it. File format, set that to FFmpeg video, encoding. You want that set to MP4, video codec, H.264, output quality, perceptually lossless. Now all you've got to do is come to render and hit render animation and you're done. All right, guys, thank you for watching. I hope you enjoyed the tutorial. If you did, please leave a like and subscribe. Always helps me grow the channel and I really appreciate it as well. Like I said earlier, I've made some variations of this render, which I think look equally cool, if not even better. And if you want to learn how I made those ones, I encourage you guys to check out my Patreon where you can directly support me and also treat yourself to some exclusive bonus content. And if you're not quite ready to take that step yet, the best you can do, again, is just like, subscribe and share my content to anyone who you think will gain value from it. As always, I'll be leaving the link to the project file in the description of this video. And if you want to check out more of my work, you can find that at nebmotion.co.uk.